I first met Mr. Kincaid during the interview process when I was applying for this job, and he wanted to get together with me for half an hour, 45 minutes, and talk about brass band. And um, he was very, very direct about what I knew about brass banding and the North American Brass Band Association and all of those kind of things. And uh, uh, I'm afraid that uh, I didn't have a whole lot of information to share with him at that time, but I sure learned a lot. I met Mr. Kincaid a year and a half ago when I transferred up here. He was playing in the trumpet section in the symphony band. That's really kind of how I got to know him. Well, in uh, War WW2, uh, my uh, first overseas station was New Zealand. And we landed in New Zealand. There were two of these uh, real brass bands, British style brass bands on the key to greet us. And we were absolutely amazed at their expertise in the sound. And they were exactly the instrumentation uh, at that time of the brass band as it it figures in the United Kingdom where it started. I knew that there was such before, but this was the first time I had actually heard a live brass band. We got approval from, from the music department through the uh, college administration and on up through the governor's office to go to New Zealand and do research on the brass bands and try to start a brass band here. So the first year we got along pretty good and it was so great we're going to keep this going. He currently plays in the symphony band and has for pretty much every semester since I've been here. When I started playing with the brass band the first summer that I was at Western State College, I played in the Ripiano cornet section and that kind of gave me an idea of, of what playing in a brass band was like. My experience was very eye-opening at first because this was the first time I had ever played in a section with just cornets and I, I'd never done a lot of cornet playing let alone this type of playing which was brass band and it's a very different style. A lot of what I learned about playing in this particular style I learned just from listening to the players. Last summer was the first time I did the brass band. I played in the third cornet section with Mr. Kincaid and Dr. Wacker's father actually. It was amazing to actually get a play for Mr. Kincaid while he conducted a piece. He also told a lot of stories, like we were playing a piece that was written for him when Brass Band first started, I think, and it was about his actual life and trip through um, World War II. He told us about this time where after they were done clearing Iwo Jima, they were sitting around and they were putting on a concert. They put together all the members that were still living of all the different bands that were with them. And he was sitting in the back where the trumpets normally are, leaning against a jeep, and as he tells the story, you hear this little kink, kink, kink sound, and he looks over, and, and as he puts it in his words, this, this guy just popped up out of his hidey hole and threw a grenade at Well, you know, the boys, they didn't like that too much. Well, the boys in the audience took care of that pretty quick. They chased him back down his hole and got rid of him. And, and so they went and got him, and then we went and finished the concert. Got rid of the grenade, and well, we just went on with the concert. And he tells it so matter-of-factly, it's like, you know, I went down to City Market and got a gallon of milk today. Yeah, he just pitched a grenade at us and we went on with the concert. It's hysterically funny. And it's just stories like that that really make doing brass band worth it. And the camaraderie and the family feeling among the brass band is people is just one great big happy family. And that's been part of it. Every person from the oldest to the youngest person, I'm, I was the youngest person in the band, but the next person after that, the, they always came up and, hi, what's your name, where are you from, what do you do, why are you here? I think Mr. Kincaid's assessment as one big family is, is very true, and, and I think the, the family aspect of it comes from uh, the common belief, uh, the heritage, almost, almost the bloodline that's, that's passed down, because um, Unlike many traditional music education systems, brass banding is passed from person to person, from generation to generation. We have uh, 50 at least, I believe, and a waiting list for membership. We just really can't go much above 50. It's not practical. When we have our brass band, the instruments are correct. In fact, they're some of the best you can get. So are some of the players. It means 
an opportunity to get together with like-minded individuals and create beautiful music for people to enjoy. That's very different than the attitude many professional musicians have towards what they do. This is more of a, of a gathering than it is a gig. It doesn't really influence me so much in how I play or anything like that, but just the simple fact that he's 89 years old and he can still play the trumpet when most people stop playing around 65, 70, that's something that I can only hope to be able to do and to play it as well as he still does is something that I really strive for every day. Oh boy, I think it's obvious it means tremendous. Really does. Now, I'm not negating the regular band. Listen, I'm a, a bandsman. And yes, symphony orchestras too. He's a, really a tremendous, tremendous musician and, and really a treasure for Western State College. The really great players usually end up being the best people in the world, too. We've got the trumpets. We don't need me, but I need them. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. I need them. I'm last chair cornet in the brass band I organized. I need them more than they need me. I don't know um, how to explain it. I'm uh, 89. Ha <laughs> ha. I can't give it up.